So I'm honored to be here um, and at your invitation to speak. Um, but before I get into my prepared remarks, I just want to I want to tell you a personal story. Um, this actually just came up as I was uh, in the in the speakers lounge because I think it's relevant to what's happened where we see ourselves at today. So my first experience with the tech world was in college. And I was very excited about the technology and really wanted to get into it, learn more about it. Uh, and so I took a programming class. And uh, one of the things I needed to do was to create a program, take it over to the computer lab, and see how it worked. Well, um, my, my program had an eternal loop in it. And I think you all know what that means. So of course, when I went to print it, uh, the paper kept spitting out over and over. Uh, every other person in the room was a man. And I asked for help, but no one would help me. In fact, one man turned around and looked at me and said, you don't belong here. And I have to tell you, the, the atmosphere in there was very hostile towards me. Um, and it was very intimidating for a young 18-year-old and I quit the class. And I made up my mind that day that I didn't care how technology worked, I just wanted it to work. That was it. You know, and poetic justice, years later I became an employment discrimination lawyer. I ended up suing companies that employed guys like that. <laughs> But this is where we find ourselves today. And now I'll get into my prepared remarks because it talks a bit about the, the statistics and where we're at. And of course, because I have, you know, this is a, a natural consequence of someone who doesn't want to know how technology works, but just that it works. So this is old school. Um, but you know, the Pacific Northwest is known around the world for its tech prowess and the future-oriented economy that we've created. You know, we lead through our technological innovation, but we have to lead in another arena, and that is inclusion of women. In my time working with Chaitra and the leadership team from Women in Cloud, I was just devastated to learn that what happened to me is still going on years and years later. As I'm sure you're all acutely aware, just 2%, 2% of all venture capital funding is awarded to women despite the fact that women tech entrepreneurs are producing 20% higher revenues than their male counterparts. Think about that. Only the power of prejudice can cause even the most hardened capitalist to turn down a 20% above average return on their investment. And, and let's make no mistake about it, that's what we're up against. Despite the fact that we're working harder and harder and even better, Everything from career advancement to investment opportunity is still obstructed. In tech, the glass ceiling is still very solid. So in addition to the 2% of venture capital, we only have 5% of our leaders in tech are women. Just 5%. If that were the legislature, I would be one of a handful of women representing nearly 7.5 million people in the state. I think by any standard, that is an abject failure. And while we have a lot of work to do in legislatures here and around the country, we have a lot more work to do in the tech industry. And I have to say that the failure in gender equity isn't just found in leadership. Between 1980 and 2010, 88% of all information technology patents were invented by male-only teams. 2% were invented by female-only teams. And it's not only that men are the dominant force in decision-making, it's that our digital world was created almost entirely by men. It's fair to say that the digital space, even to this day, is still primarily a male space. That's one of the reasons, one of the many reasons, that women in cloud is essential. You are both leading the fight to ensure that our 21st century technologies and industries are both inclusive and designed by women. So what are we asking the leaders in this industry to do? First and foremost, it starts with sh uh, sharing and uplifting the voices of women. We must ensure that our perspective is at the table and a critical component in, de in decision making. 
Our male counterparts must buy into these changes. This cannot be a woman-led movement. We need male support. We need to get everyone involved and set up women to be advisors and mentors. We have to analyze and take action. We know that the mix of women in leadership is severely inadequate. So we have to demand inclusion amongst leadership and in the workforce. We can create practices and norms that encourage women to feel welcomed, valued, and involved. And I can tell you from my perspective as an employment discrimination attorney, the sexual harassment policy is at the cornerstone of that uh, in the workplace. Now, this isn't going to solve the entirety of the problem, but there are meaningful steps to accelerate the gap. A global gender gap, which, by the way, won't close for another 100 years in the tech industry if we don't fight for these changes today. And that's where I'll need your help most. Right now, I'm working with Women in Cloud to host a lunch and learn session in Olympia where we can keep this dialogue going with my colleagues in the legislature. We'll stay tuned. We'll give you some updates on that. But today, we celebrate you, the female entrepreneurs from the tech world, who are a source of inspiration, innovation, and paving the way for the next generation of women and creating a 21st century that is indeed for all. And with that, I'd like to invite Chai up here. I'd like to present her with the signed resolution that you saw a little bit about on the screen. Uh, this was the first in Washington state history where we had a resolution honoring women in the tech industry. And it was unanimously voted on, I'm proud to say. And I'd like to present you with this. Thank you.